Hello and welcome to the Friday, June 7th, 2024 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Xavier today analyzed an interesting piece of malware. This malware was written in Python and distinguished itself by having a, well, don't basically run after a particular date or as Xavier called it, a best before date, similar to an expiration date that you often see for food and the like. The interesting part here is that once this day expires, the malware essentially will refuse to detonate and download the second stage. Second stage here appears to be Cobalt Strike. In my opinion, this could very well be something that may have been used as part of a pen test. Also, Xavier suggests because it uses in part internal IP addresses that this may still be under development. As part of a pen test, of course, avoiding some collateral damage is always a concern. So limiting the time frame when a particular piece of malware will actually run makes some sense in that context. Could also, of course, be for a real attack where the bad guy is attempting to limit their exposure. In particular, for more targeted attacks, uh, there could be a problem if the malware escapes, affects too many unrelated systems, it actually then gets added to various anti-malware signatures, which may help the intended victim to actually detect the infection. And in a talk at a cybersecurity conference in Boston, an FBI assistant director did note that as part of their disruption of the Lockbit ransomware gang, the FBI is now in the possession of about 7,000 decryption keys for various uh, victims. Of course, they don't necessarily know who the victims are that uh, these particular decryption keys link to. So they're asking if you were a Lockbit ransomware victim, if you still have encrypted files, files that you would like to decrypt, then by all means, uh, contact your local FBI office and they may be able to assist you obtaining the relevant decryption keys. This is not the first time something like this happens. Sometimes you also have other parties come up uh, with uh, decryption tools. If you are a ransomware victim, it's usually a good idea to keep backups of the encrypted files in case you may later be able to decrypt them. And when it comes to IoT security, one of the things that I always mention is it's good to know what the end of life policy is for a particular device that you own. Looks like we now as of April have some help here from the United Kingdom's product security and Telecommunication Infrastructure Regulation, or PSTI. This regulation requires any company that imports devices that connect to the internet to the United Kingdom to provide a statement as to how long they will provide the updates for their devices. Most notably, Apple now just uh, filed uh, their report and they state that you will receive updates five years from the first supply date, which is a little bit shorter actually, I think, than what they usually do. Of course, this is the minimum that they will provide updates for Samsung. Google actually do provide seven years now for not just security updates, but also in general Android OS updates. The date that's being required here by this regulation is the date for which you'll receive security updates. So this may not include new functionality. Haven't really looked at the database to see what other manufacturers and such have filed their statements yet. But I think in particular for things like routers and such, uh, this uh, may be quite interesting if they're also covered by this regulation. And the Federal Communication Commission uh, did uh, publish a proposed rule, so it's not an actual rule yet, that would require broadband providers to better security border gateway protocol, BGP. Lots has been written over the years about insecurities in BGP, and we, of course, had numerous cases of hijacking. 
there is a solution and that solution actually has gotten uh, quite a bit of uh, momentum uh, behind it. It's uh, the resource public key infrastructure where essentially digitally sign your BGP announcements. NIST does actually maintain sort of a web page that measures how many IPv4 prefixes are taking advantage of uh, RPKI. And uh, interestingly, just earlier this year, that uh, number sort of crossed the 50% uh, boundary. So now more than half of prefixes are actually secured by RPKI. I believe many of the large uh, broadband providers in the US already do support it. So certainly sounds like a worthwhile endeavor and I'll link to the actual rule. It does spell out some of the requirements for larger and smaller broadband providers, kind of taking into account that smaller broadband providers probably would have some issues with the burden of additional reporting. Well, and this is it for today. So thanks for listening. Thanks for subscribing. And uh, yeah, just thanks for spreading the word and talk to you again on Monday.